So, um, maybe let's start, like, introduce yourself and then who you are, what you do, where you're from, and why you do it. Right, yeah, well, um, Simon Baxter, you know that much. Um, currently based in North Yorkshire, been there since 1989, um, always an avid mountain biker in the area. Um, which in sort of more recent, I've, well I've always had an interest in photography since the age of seven mm. but I would say the serious photography is more of a kind of recent mission um, to replace mountain biking. So yeah, I kind of, through, through various things, through, through injury and through chronic pain, it kind of led me towards um, woodland photography. I found that was my, my happy place, that was my place where I found it the most therapeutic yeah. and that's where I felt connected to and felt at home and that's what I, where my photography's kind of concentrated since. I've had cameras since I was I was seven. I remember getting get, get my very first um, film camera from Argos which cost me like 15 pounds or something like that. <laughs> um, but the kind of more serious stuff is literally only in the last sort of four years. Um, which isn't very long at all in photography terms. Yeah. So things just change quite quickly and I, I think I just sort of found what I connected to and I talk a lot about emotional connection to the landscape. And, you know, I, I had that because I went to these places which made me feel better. Yeah. Feel better physically, felt better mentally. And if you've got that, then you, you can't help but have an emotional connection to that place. And I think that well, I hope that started to sort of show through my photography in terms of my passion for the subject, but the passion for the location as well. You have like knowledge around the things that you shoot that most people don't have, and you pass that on or you show that in the videos. I, I think that's like, a lot of people find your videos like calming, like you said. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, it's I, mean, just I, like... I, I hope so. I hope so yeah. because that's that's what I needed in my own life was that calming element mm. and that's what I felt when I went into woodland it's almost like the photography is a byproduct of the reason why I'm there in the first place yeah so I think I'm, that's the same for a lot of people though like yeah yeah for me photography is also just a, a means to travel you know yeah yeah absolutely and we absolutely. all have an excuse why we take photos I think no one well very few people take photos out of the love of photography there's always some sort of other passion like other yeah you duck you you're basically showing your perspective of something and that something has to be your passion. Otherwise, if you're just shooting because you love yeah. how the camera captures something, then you, in essence, yeah. you can shoot anything, really. Yeah, so it doesn't I think, matter I think, what you shoot. Yeah, absolutely. And as like I've said before, I think the places that you love to be without a camera yeah, exactly. is the places yeah. where you should be with the, with yeah. the camera as well. Um, so I'm quite content... And be, in fact, I've been in places where, and the conditions have been awesome. And you look at it and you think, I would love to have a camera right now, but I don't get hung up on that because it's just nice just to experience it and think. And that's the advantage of shooting local is that, well, it'll happen again yeah, and I'll, I'll come, come back. back. Whereas like I, <laughs> I'm like in all these places probably only once in my life. Yeah. And I like, I'll shoot, you know, I'll, I'll, I have to shoot. I yeah. feel like I have to shoot. Yeah. And my camera's always on me. I've noticed that as well when we've been around. You've always got the camera in hand. You're always ready to shoot. Yeah. Um, and I, str I struggle, you know, these trips away, you know, coming to epic places like Scotland, I, I struggle with that. Yeah. Um, it takes me a while to kind of get into the flow and that different way of working because, like I say, if I'm, if I'm working locally and I'm just not feeling it, then I go home and come back another day. Yeah. Whereas here... You've spent the money, you've taken the time to it's travel, and, and you feel as if you have to get something out of it. Yeah. The experience is such a huge part of it for me, and I'm, it is the same for you, like yeah. you, you know, you've said. And um, just just to kind of be there experiencing yesterday and such the biting wind and just being blasted in the face yeah. with all the snow that was being kicked up and 
it was it was it was pretty awesome it was pretty awesome but photographically Challenging. I struggled because it was completely <laughs> alien um uh, you know I used to kind of love I've always loved conditions like that but from mm. a photographic point of view it's so far removed from mm. what I normally do so my typical approach of being very slow considered thoughtful just trying different things you can't do it there it's like the opposite, it was the opposite of yeah you know your home turf where you just walk out your house and yeah, shoot yeah, that yeah. tree that you've seen many times and you're yeah. just waiting for the conditions here you go to a place where the conditions are the subject of the shot yeah or they have to become the subject of the Absolutely, shot yeah 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 because yeah photographically yesterday there was no the light wasn't great no, and, um, and compositionally it was challenging. It was very challenging, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I was like, I didn't know what to do until... It was funny because we... So we rocked up and then we saw that rock that was like cracked in, in the ice. Yeah, yeah. That was like cool. amazing. Yeah. But that was like, oh, this would be really great with good light. Mm -hmm. And then I saw you walking through the wind with Meg and the blasting yeah. head along. Head down. Head down. I was like, yeah. that's my subject. Like, yeah, what yeah, am I yeah, looking yeah. for rocks? Like, yeah. you are my subject here. Yeah. And like, for me, it went click. You know, I was like... Yeah. You know, your style was perfect for those conditions. Yeah, it suited that place. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you, you, you like that human element and just to, there's no better way, I think, to capture that those yeah. conditions than somebody kind of walking through with their head down, just like, yeah. you can sort of probably, you know, if you zoomed in, you probably see, see my face like, what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I here? Um, but it's cool, yeah. So I don't think I came back with anything that I particularly like photographically. Yeah. But it was awesome being there. Yeah. And, um, and I think... I'm looking forward to seeing your images from it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it was difficult. Yeah. And for me, like photography, if I shoot a bad photo in an extreme location and I'm, I'm happy with the documentation of what I captured, mm. that's fine. You yeah. know, I shot with the highlighting and the pharaohs. Like not, they're not all compositionally perfect shots, but I just love that that moment is so unique and that, yeah. that Absolutely. environment yeah. is so extreme. Mm. I, I, that's where I'm like I get really excited you yeah, know, and I'll yeah. just be running around and taking hundreds of photos of angles and trying to get the best possible composition in the most extreme conditions yeah yeah that's my challenge I thought what was fantastic was that it was you know even though we were kind of walking through the mountains and then we came around the back of the mountain and even by the time we were three quarters of the way there we had no idea no. what it was going we, no. we just weren't prepared for just how different it would be just from that little bit of extra elevation <laughs> yeah. to a point which we thought would be sheltered and we got up there like oh. i've not even seen frozen water like that before that lake was huge completely frozen yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and the waterfall was completely frozen yeah. so even that just to you know like i said coming back without an image I'm comfortable with that because it was just pretty fantastic being there. Yeah. Mm. That's cool. And then today we had like the complete opposite. I, yeah, that's, I really think like these last two days was like just such a good collaboration to completely unintentional. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. yesterday we ended up in this like extreme environment where I was like suddenly, ooh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. And today yeah. we woke up and you like dash off in front of me. I filmed it like, you, you know, my camera footage is like shaking. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Flying Simon up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we kind of headed into that ancient forest and it started to snow and then as we kind of got higher, well, we didn't go higher at all, but no. as we got higher and higher and the flakes got fatter and fatter mm -hmm. and they were just mm -hmm. so graceful Jeez. in how they came yeah. down. And I was just like, wow. Yeah. It felt great to actually share that experience with, yeah. with somebody else and to actually sort of see somebody else enjoying woodland, you know, mm. similar to how I enjoy woodland was, was pretty cool. And, um, but a huge part of photography for me is that kind of feeling of discovery, that feeling of, because it doesn't have, it can be quite small exploration. Mm. Um, you know, you don't have to scale mountains and walk for miles and miles to short walks to places which feel as if they're not trodden very often. And like walking into that woodland today, because it felt as if, you know, I've not seen photographs from that location. No. The character of the place was just fantastic. Yeah. My emotional connection to somewhere is incredibly important. I just, I almost feel like I can't take an image if I don't have that connection. Mm. So that so that element of that feeling of discovery, going somewhere you've not been before, where you don't know anything about it, don't yeah. know, you don't know anybody that's been there before. Um, so you just automatically feel as if, you know, connected to it and as if there's a piece of it is yours. Yeah. 
you know, you don't the privilege you don't... of documenting it for the first time. So yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I like... you can't you can't claim it as your own, yeah. but you do feel as if you've um, just discovered something, and it yeah. just immediately energizes me, and I want to shoot, and I want to make the most of it, and somewhere like that, you've got to go again and again and again because in real terms our time there was really quite short you know what i think is so strange like we we don't know each other right we haven't met each other no, a couple just of ch- chats 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 briefly, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and like it's just this one passion about the same thing that can like bring people like together like we did here yeah and it doesn't even have to be about the same genre of not at all photography it's, but there's just like a slight overlap in it and we we talked for i don't know to yeah, a total of ten hours, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like easily. And, yeah, and it was yeah, it was great. Yeah. I think that was. Yeah, well, that's I that's why that. that's why I like your channel as well because I don't take images anything like yours, yeah. and I do everything that I can to remove anything man-made and the whole <laughs> all human element from the images. Yeah. But I still completely respect everything that you do, and that's the kind of feeling that I get from. Uh, the channel and it's why I enjoy any channel like that where you feel as if the person's been genuine and there's yeah. passion there um, passion about where they are and the subject and I can connect with that and you know it doesn't matter what type of photography is it but as long as I get that feeling through the screen then i would chat with them for, for yeah yeah <laughs> for hours same, and hours I mean it's that. the same yeah, yeah. I, I often get people like oh you know you get to go to all these cool places and hmm. You know, I'd love to shoot this and this and this. And can you give me some advice on how to do that? You know, yeah. travel and shoot. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, I often shot at home as well. You know, and yeah. I and I love your stuff. And you shoot at home all the yeah, time, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. I just very slowly realized that it's it's not about going to epic places. It's just about you know finding these places where you enjoy being and. Um, there's huge advantages to shooting locally and the ability to kind of get to know a location intimately so I can go and discover just single trees which I just really like you know they're just real characters and um, or they have excellent mood um, or there's some sort of story to be told and if I discover it and the conditions aren't good then I can come away and go back go back another day And um, I'm, I, I'm so jealous of that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it, it just depends. I mean, I have lots of people on YouTube say things like, oh, you have amazing places on your doorstep or you live in tree mecca. Mm-hmm. And it's honestly not the case. You know, as far as the UK is concerned, it's not the case. And people do not come to North Yorkshire for the woodland. Mm-hmm. These are tiny, tiny pockets of woodland which, and there's places like this dotted around all over the UK. Um, and you just have to spend the time seeking them out. And yep. just the smallest of places can offer a brilliant photograph because if you get the timing right and the conditions right and the light right and the composition right, and if everything just comes together, then yeah, you can make meaningful images. Mm-hmm. As, as, as amazing as golden light is and mist and hoarfrosts and all these various things um i think kind of light is often misunderstood yeah and even flat light can be good yeah. for, for, for images and you know if it, it and even if it's miserable and raining it can do fantastic things for color um so if you just look a little bit closer and you know, filter everything down and just look at details and patterns and textures. There's still great images yeah. to be had. It just takes a lot more time and a lot more, a lot more effort. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Simon. Thanks for chatting, and it was amazing. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me up and letting me stay. No, no, it's fun. fantastic to me. Cool. It's been, it's been good yeah. fun. It's been good fun. And um, yeah, check out his channel. Um, Thank you very much. If you're really wondering about, you know, what to do, I don't have cool locations around me. Check out his channel because yeah. it's really about finding those little pockets all around. It's 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 attainable. I like to think it's attainable yeah. for most people. Yeah. And yeah, he, yeah, has a wealth of information on that channel. So check it out. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Good man. <laughs>